Swift is moving forward with big updates, packaged straight in SPM, Apple's foundation models, major UI kit changes in iOS 26, and new stat type for safer file handling. Hi there, it's main news, your monthly update about macOS and iOS development. I'm Roman Mishenko, a software engineer at CleanMyMac. Swift Package Manager received a new tool called Package Traits. This feature makes it much easier to adapt packages to different environments without messy workarounds. Instead of creating separate forks or juggling multiple versions, package authors can now define traits like embedded or WebAssembly directly in their package Swift. When using a package, developers simply choose which traits to enable, and the package adjusts itself accordingly, whenever that means exposing extra APIs, including optional dependencies, or fine-tuning behavior for a specific platform. The idea comes from Swift Evolution proposal, which went through community review before being accepted for Swift 6.1. Traits are applied at package level, which keeps things simple and ensures consistency across all targets in the package. Traits give developers a straightforward way to make packages more flexible, easier to configure, and ready to work smoothly across a gross range of platforms where Swift is used. Getting started is straightforward. First, define a trait per scenario to keep behavior consistent across all targets. Inside each trait, group everything that changes for that mode, choose a default trait experience, and let consumers opt into extras. We already talked about Foundation Models, a new framework from Apple, but here's a more detailed breakdown of its API. To start using Foundation Models, you need to create a language model session, optionally pre warmed to load assets and start streaming responses with a prompt. The stream itself is an async sequence of snapshots of partially generated content. After the setup, the first thing you will notice is performance. Foundation models is tuned to deliver faster results while keeping resources usage efficient. This focus makes a strong option not only for lightweight apps, but also for demanding production environments where responsiveness really matters. We tested the CPU and memory usage during the text generation and were surprised by how lightweight the new models are. In fact, the app CPU and memory usage almost didn't change. That's because the model itself isn't loaded directly into application memory, but handled by the system, keeping the app footprint minimal while still delivering fast results. But even with this, we didn't notice any spikes in CPU or memory usage during the tests. And its core, foundation models introduce a structured model types that developers can rely on for consistency across projects, including a general model for broad use cases and text tagging model for tasks that require precise labeling and classification. This separation allows developers to pick the right tool for their workflow without overcomplicating implementation. The foundation models framework provides multiple sampling types, giving developers the flexibility to choose between predictable outputs and more varied exploratory results depending on the use case. Options include the greedy sampling, which always chooses the most likely to account for full deterministic results. Top case sampling, which selects for a fixed set of high probability tokens to balance determinism and variety. And top P or nucleus sampling, which dynamically adjusts the candidate pool based on probability thresholds, enabling more creative and human-like outputs. Another key feature is the temperature parameter, which gives developers fine-grained control over how deterministic or diverse this framework outputs should be. Lower values help enforce stability and repeatable results by sharpening the probability distribution, while higher values encourage broader variation, ideal for experimentation, prototyping, or creative scenarios. Leaving the temperature unset allows the system to choose a reasonable default automatically, striking a balance between predictability and creativity. But if you select greedy sampling, the temperature parameter has no effect on generation, since the model always picks a single most likely token regardless of distribution adjustments. The iOS 26 SDK delivers one of the widest UIKit updates in years. While the Spotlight is a striking new liquid glass design language that we already talked about, there are many more changes. Developers now get powerful reactive APIs, fresh lifecycle hooks, and modernized app architecture tools that make UIKit development both more elegant and future-proof. 
from smoother animation to simplifying state handling. This release brings UIKit closer to Swift UI's reactivity while retaining the stability and maturity that long-time iOS engineers rely on. In a big leap toward reactive programming, UIKit now supports Swift's absorbable macro out of the box, automatically tracking state changes in models and invalidating views when needed. No more set need layout dense. Complementing this, the brand new update properties lifecycle method runs just before layouts abuse, letting developers separate logic updates from layout logic clearly and efficiently. And with the flash updates animation option, interface changes driven by observable state or layout constraint tweaks are smoothly animated without manual layout calls. These updates together bring the best of SwiftUI-like reactivity to classic UIKit. iOS 26 also nudges UIKit into the future by retiring legacy patterns and evolving key APIs. Several UI application delegate methods are now deprecated in favor of modern UI Stand Delegate and UI Windows 10 Delegate counterparts accelerating the move to a scene-based app architecture. Other practical improvements include UI Action Identifier new from Passport for streamlined Passport interactions. A new page on Swift forums proposes adding a native stat struct to the Swift system library providing a type-safe wrapper around Unix-style files metadata operations. This aims to replace verbose and error-prune C interfaces, wrapping calls like stat, lstat, fstat in Swift APIs that return structured, predictable results. The goal is to make file metadata access clearer and safer for Swift developers. The proposal stat type would let you fetch metadata from pass or file descriptor. From there, you will get Swift properties like size, type, symbolic link, permission, and many others. Additionally, metadata fetching with stat will have error handling with clear description of what exactly went wrong. Currently scoped to Unix-like platforms, but the authors plan to extend support for Windows in future iteration. This proposal is under review and implementation is already available for testing. If accepted, the start proposal would give developers who build command line tools, file explorers or backup utilities a direct and reliable way to inspect file metadata without dropping into C. Instead of juggling unsafe pointers and platform-specific quirks, a single try stat pass call would provide a strongly typed Swift object with all the needed attributes size, permission, type, and timestamps. This makes it much easier to write low-level file utilities in pure Swift, reducing both boilerplate and the likelihood of subtle bugs. That's all for now. Catch you in the next episode.